Alrighty, well, good morning everybody, and time once again for my pseudo cast. Um, and before I get things rolling here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack open a can of V8 Energy Peach Mango flavored. So, get ready for some pops. Okay. And, it, and the image you guys are seeing right now is the moon. Like the one that orbits our Earth, and as you can tell, doesn't look doesn't quite look like your traditional moon that you see, you see in other various forms of media, all nice, and bright, and shiny white, and you know, like it's uh, like somebody like somebody poured Clorox bleach on it or something, you know, that kind of thing. Nope, this this is a more realistic picture of the moon. Oh, it is the one that's on the wiki, so again, this one here looks a little more realistic than probably what you're used to. Whereas, uh, again, most other, most other pictures of the moon that you see are probably, you know, are probably all, typing something down here, just a moment. Yeah, I, like I, like I said, I'm looking at it right now. It's either, uh, it's either a nice bright, excuse me, it's either a nice bright shiny white or, or in some cases it's actually yellow. It's actually yellow, um, but nope, the the moon as it actually looks is actually a lot darker. Kind of darker, more dingier looking. Looks like someone just beat the shit out of it or something, a lot of craters and all that. So, but anyway, um, let me go ahead and get the, uh, let me go ahead and get the, uh, the sounds going. And again, I, I kind of doubt the authenticity of this. It, again, let's, I said this yesterday. If it doesn't, if the YouTube video doesn't say um, NASA Voyager or or NASA satellite or something like that, um, I'm a little doubtful as to whether or not it's actually real. So, but anyway, let me go ahead and get this going. Yeah, that's a little bit on the quiet side. It's actually all the way up. Yeah, that's up as high as it can go. first I actually have to turn the volume up a little bit on my uh, my uh, OBS program here this the program I use for recording stuff okay but anyway let me uh let me get things going here um well uh what am I what am I rate one of my stream regulars his name's uh Jay Hotlaps. Well, he uh, he was streaming Pinball FX3 today, so I'm like, yay! I mean, because it's all it's always it's always cool when uh, it's always cool when other people are streaming pinball, especially in the grand in the in the grand scheme of Twitch things. Uh, very few people uh, stream pinball. Uh, I know me. I think maybe one other person. Um, I think his name's Crow. I think that's his name. Uh, but yeah, as far I think it's just uh, me and him, the only two people I can think of that stream pinball. Well, all I can say is, uh, welcome aboard, Jay. I get you're the third. You're number three. But I just I just thought of that too. Um, I, as far as I know, I think he's of the younger generation, Jay. I mean, I'm. It, it was all, it was something I kind of recall too that um when I was when I was typing down my blog post and I think uh, of, of all the uh, pinball documentaries that I've watched I kind of I kind of noticed it as well it's like all it's like all old people these days that are playing pinball I don't really see a whole lot of the younger kids playing it 
so so it's again it's always it's always good when there's uh when there's younger people playing pinball. Cause I sure as hell don't want something like this to die with us. I mean, even even for the occasional time that I actually go out and play real pinball myself, the people that I'm uh, the people I'm seeing there. The young, the youngest I'm seeing, is they're just you know sprouting some gray hair at the temples. That's the that's the youngest I've seen. All the rest of them are all old and gray bearded or old and white bearded, that kind of thing. So yeah, so props to him for taking it up. But um, but I'm, and kind of now that I think about it, I wonder if um, uh, wonder if one of the biggest reasons why Stern, I think is the uh, the only pinball manufacturing company out there these days. I wonder if uh, that's the reason why they're always making uh these trendy pop culture tables. You know, tables that follow current events. Maybe that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get the young kids into playing pinball again. I never thought about it until today. I mean, I, I mean, I thought it was just, uh, it was just pure money making, or you know, they're trying to, they're trying to attract that 18 to 35 year old male demographic. You know, kind of like with, um, kind of like with games that have fan service. You know, anime girls with big old fake tits. You know, they're trying to get the, uh, the 18 to 35 male demographic in there buying the games. You know, try to get them in the doors. Or try to get them through the doors, I should say. But yeah, it's almost like I can't say it enough. Props to him for streaming it. And and now he too can be uh, pissed off as hell whenever he, uh, whenever he misses a shot that he's... He was uh, so carefully aiming. Or, you know... You know, I'm trying to, you know, and now he can, he can damn near throw his controller, controller when he gets the, uh, multi-ball wizard mode going. Boy, they end up fucking it up and having the ball strain on him shortly after. So, but it, at least in my mind, that's, uh, that's pretty much what happens when you get better at something. It becomes fresh, it becomes more frustrating when you mess up, you know, you start off. Uh, you're more passionate about something, or you take something more serious, you start getting more frustrated when things go wrong. You know, when you when you do everything you know, when you do everything you can do to make to make something happen, to make it possible, but things still fall short anyway. I mean, hell yeah, hell yeah, that's frustrating. You know, but then you have. I really hate saying this word, but uh, when casuals. You know, when, when casuals play something, you know, it, it, they're playing the game casually. They're just, it, they're all about having fun. But, you know, they're, you know, they, it's like they don't give two shit, you know, they don't care about the game as much as I do. You know, they're basically tourists, but on the upside, when they start screwing things up, it doesn't bother them as much. I was like this when I first started streaming pinball. And I was also like this when I was a little kid. When I first discovered pinball, I didn't really care where the ball went, as long as I, you know, as long as I could keep batting that ball around. I mean, I, I was a happy, I was a happy kid. I was a happy camper. But now I'm at a point where I'm actually being careful where the shot goes, and you know, I, you know, I try to, I do some mental prep work and all that. I take a few moments to relax, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and yet still I flub the shots. So yeah, that's super frustrating. And I, I probably said this. I think I've said this in other casts too. I can totally understand why, uh, why players, uh, why players cry at fighting game tournaments when they lose. I mean, all that training, all that practice that they've been doing, you know, doing everything they can possibly do to make sure their game is wound tight as can be. But then they go to a tournament and they get their asses kicked. I totally understand why they just bust up crying. So. Um, but 
otherwise, I haven't really... I really haven't done a whole lot other than the, um... Other than me watching Jay's stream pinball and then, um, my pinball stream, it actually went pretty good. Just like, uh, last week. Pinball FX3, did a good job in there, just like I have been doing. Uh, Pinball Arcade, same thing. Um, even though... Even though, um, I didn't... I didn't do all the things that I wanted to do. You know, like, get the... Get a wizard mode and all that, but I... It wasn't like I was... It wasn't like I was performing so wretchedly that, uh, I had to abandon the... I had to abandon the stream immediately afterwards or anything like that. So... I mean... Made some mistakes here and there, but I, I do that in all my streams. But... So, yeah, this is... Definitely, definitely a day for the books. Um, and, um, oh, also, I have, I've been uh, listening to a lot of Dungeon Synth, too. I usually play, uh, it's a new genre I discovered, uh, Dungeon Synth. Uh, I usually play it when playing Slay the Spire. Uh, but, um, I act, I don't remember where I saw it, or how I found it, but, uh, but there's, there's an actual, uh, Wikipedia article on it, on Dungeon Sense. Never knew about it. So I looked it up, and apparently it was a type of genre that started back in the 90s. Um, I believe the first one, his name is Mortise. Uh, he was a... I guess he was the bass player, or, yeah, the bass player in the band Emperor. Um, it's a Norwegian black metal. It's like one of my... It was like one of my favorite albums. But I just have, like, their first one in the Nightside Eclipse. Used to play that uh, from start to finish fairly often. But, yeah, um, he he broke up, he broke off from Emperor and started doing his own music. Um, which, again, he's the godfather of Dungeon Synth. But um, I listened to, like, his, uh, his, first two, his first two albums. I think one of them was a demo. So yeah, some good stuff there. Um, I I wish I knew the I wish I knew the name of the of the artist. I played him like yesterday or the day before during my uh, Slay the Spire stream, like Grom the Goblin or something like that. But um, he does like eight bit dungeon synth. Like damn, that's some cool stuff. But it does have to be said, though, there is one huge drawback with all of this. It, it, the stuff is grossly repetitive. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And just repeats over and over and over and over. I mean, I get it's ambient music. But, you know, with a lot of the... With a lot of the ambient music that, uh... The, the non-dungeon stuff, you know, stuff, you know, like... Ocean waves and waterfalls and whatnot. I mean, it's repetitive, but it's also more natural, for lack of a better word. You know, it's ocean waves. You know, you know the the waves crash in and then the water recedes. The waves crash in again. The water recedes again. I mean, that's nature. That's it's natural for it to do that. I think that's one of the reasons why that kind of stuff doesn't bother me as much as dungeon synth. I mean, it's like. It's like, it's unnatural, again, for lack of a better word. You know, you know that the music repeats over and over. You know, I don't, I don't need, I don't need somebody to repeat, to repeat a melody. I only need somebody to repeat a melody maybe, you know, like, like once, maybe twice, and that's it. You don't need to repeat that melody over and 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 over again. But yeah, again, as much as much as I love Dungeon Synth, it, it, it that is a huge glaring drawback. So. Oh yeah, and about him too. I saw, a, I saw a picture of Mortise. I'm like, okay, so this is who he is. He was a, he dresses up in like black robes and stuff, and he wears this big old huge witch nose. 
Like, have you, ever, have you ever seen the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Remember the, uh, I, the I'm the i not a witch scene? The big old witch's nose they put on the girl? That's what Mortise wears. Something like that. But I'm wondering, I'm like, hmm, so that's what that is. That's what that is. I mean, I remember seeing, uh, I think it was either, this was like many years ago, it was either a documentary about metal, about metal music, or it was a documentary about Emperor. What are both of them? But yeah, it uh, it had it had this little it had this footage about Mortis and this is what he was wearing. He he kind of dressed like a kind of dressed like a witch, and he had this big old he had this big old prosthetic nose on him. He had or he had this big prosthetic nose on his face. I'm like, huh, okay, whatever. Didn't really think about it until this morning. Until, until I, I looked up Mortis, I'm like, oh, okay. So that's who he is. All right. So, so pretty good learning experience right there. Now I just need to cut his damn track short. But yeah, the Gron the Goblin. I don't. I can't remember the exact name, but yeah, Gron the Goblin has the same problem too. His music is too repetitive. And um, also, it it should also be said too that um, to be fair, there's a lot of a lot of my favorites out there suffer from the same issue, being overplayed. Um, I think I said this about uh my all-time favorite band, The Residents, the commercial album. I mean, technically, their music, that album there, is grossly overplayed too. But it's got 40 tracks, and the it was part of it was part of the theme. The commercial album was a was a mesh of was a mesh of top 40 radio and one minute commercials. So the residents just, they just kind of blended those two together. So yeah, the album has 40 tracks, all of them one minute long. So there, so with them it was kind of understandable. Uh, but another uh, another album I can think of. Uh, uh, Diggable Planets, Reaching, um, I think it's A Reputation of Time and Space, but, um, it's number, it's, it's tied for fifth on my, uh, top five albums, but yeah, they, or, 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 let me, for a little, for a little more context on it, that album there holds the distinction of being both my all-time favorite rap album and my all-time favorite jazz album. I can't think of any other album that has that, where, where you're, uh, you have belts in multiple weight classes. I mean, you know, my, you know, my favorite, my favorite metal album is, uh, it's, it's only a metal album. Like, it's not, it's all metal, you know, and, I mean, if I knew my all-time favorite metal album right now, I'd probably be saying it, but I can't remember what it was. Um, Ministry's Filth Pig album first comes to mind, but I know there's, there's got to be others. I want to say, uh, oh God, a toss up between Pantera's Far Beyond Driven and the Great Southern Trend Kill. I can't decide between those two, but otherwise I, otherwise I'm just, I'm, Definitely gonna have to say the number one would probably be Ministry's Filth Pig album. But anyway, going back to what I was originally saying, I mean, I mean, uh, Dickable Planets, their Reaching album, their album is kind of overplayed. Like they could have paired off, they could have shaved off a few of those tracks, and it still would have been an awesome album. So, but I'm, I'm just saying, it, it, the, 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 um. The repetitious overplaying, it isn't something that's exclusive to Dungeon Synth. I mean, lots of other genres, um, they have that same problem as well. Yeah, you know, compared to some of the, um, some of the sounds I've heard on these other planets. This mode here is actually uh this mode actually kinda sounds like uh 
like Jupiter and uh, I think Saturn as well. Kind of a... Kind of a kind of a gale force wind sound. That's kind of the interesting part on that too, cause uh, this moon here, it's not a it's not composed of gas or anything like that, but yet it's it sounds like it's got gale force winds going on though. It's like a damn hurricane. Usually um usually I hear that in like the the gas giant planets like uh, again Jupiter, Saturn, and I think uh, Neptune and or Uranus. They're the windy ones. It's like the, the solid planets kinda have this. Uh, I don't I don't kind of a I it's hard it's a I'm I'm trying to find a I'm trying to find a good word for it. A more a more solid sound, again for lack of a better word. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure you guys, you guys kind of get the idea of what I mean, though. Um, but otherwise, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off here. Um, I've said all the things I wanted to say this morning, so, so, thanks so much for dropping in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And this will be my last cast for the week, uh, because my work week has started up. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So, so you probably won't be hearing from me again until Sunday morning. So, but until then, thanks again for coming by, everybody. Uh, take care and see you all again. Bye now.